<laughs> that is why Gil Carrillo, real Gil Carrillo, wants to be your sheriff. If you're out there in the United States and you'd like a week with Gil, he'll be the sheriff of your, of your county. Hello, everyone. Hola, mis amigos. You're listening to Oh My God, Hi, Hijo de Dios. Hola. With me, George Lopez, porque sabes que let's do the show porque I got a lot of things to do. I got to go to that dry cleaner here by Kim Phelps. Se pegó la cabeza y algo que es Neo Spore Spore and Paul. You know what George is? Oh, I'm sure he's around here somewhere. What's his name? George Lopez. George Lopez. Oh my God. OMG. OMG. Hi. Oh my God. Hi. If you're feeling overwhelmed lately, uh, you're not alone. Start feeling better with a single message. Talkspace.online therapy matches you with a licensed therapist from the comfort of your device. Get $100 off your first month with, oh my God, hi, capital, at Talkspace.com. Well, full disclosure, I ate a couple of gummies on the way over here (laughs) because I haven't been out of the house since... What did I do? Tuesday. Hadn't been out of the house. And that was when you were here. And you know, yeah, that was when I started. Oh, I was here. I haven't, <laughs> hadn't gone out in a week. Listen, man, I don't know what, I've never done heroin, but my room looks like a motherfucker that might have done heroin lived in there. Like a, <laughs> like food everywhere, fucking to cagados all over, <laughs> fucking <laughs> love rags, <laughs> the, all that bullshit, fucking do, three different fucking shoes, one shoe each. I'm like, this must be what it's like to do fucking hair. But I slept. Like a rock, man. Ruben Paul told me it's because I hadn't worked in 14 months, and then all of a sudden I worked two weeks. Yeah, I'll take it no, out of I you. Don't think that's, I don't think that's it. Uh, well, I know you had a, a fun surprise. You wanted to have me. I have a couple surprises. So, Freddy, so, so I know that you're a you're Dodger right. fan. Who, who's, what are some of your favorite players? Oh, over the years. And don't uh, say fucking Stan Musial. No, and no, Fucking no. Bobby Heichinks, <laughs> whatever the fuck. Mickey Hatcher, are. leader of the stuntmen. When he hit That's home right. run back when they uh, beat Oakland, is he with the Angels now? Uh, he's retired now. He was he was with the Angels as a coach, and he's not doing anything right Listen, now. Listen, that dude. You know how they you know how they initiate you in gangs like two dudes stand like a whole group of guys, right? St- what do they call it? Like running the line, or what do they call that? <laughs> Getting jumped line. in, yeah. running the line. Yeah, in, yeah. So you get like ten or twenty guys on opposite lines, and then to get in, you have to run through the line while they punch and kick you and fucking stab you you can get shot um uh that's how they used to initiate uh, mickey gang. at you he was always he was dirty he always played he played hard you could what i was trying to fucking already kick it in <laughs> I, I lost my place you could throw Mickey Hatcher to the line, put on his Dodge uniform, he fucking still get a base hit. Oh yeah, he, he, was, he was he was awesome when they beat Oakland when they weren't even supposed to be on the same field as those guys. Right. When they wanted up there, I was out in the field, I was working on a murder, and Andy Ferrillo, who used to not Bud oh, Ferrillo, yeah, I know Andy Ferrillo. Bud Ferrillo used to work for the Times. Andy was his son and worked for the Examiner at the time. We had the Herald Examiner at the time. Yeah. So Andy used to see me. He knew I was a season ticket holder. I'd bump into him at the baseball games well he called me up he says hey Gil what are you doing I said what do you mean what I'm doing I, I just come in from the field on a murder I'm watching TV it's the only game it's the only ticket in town brother I'm watching the mm-hmm. Dodgers and what do you think I said leader the stuntman Mickey Hatcher my hero he hit it out we won the game I'm just I'm just all pumped up next day headlines it was the only ticket in town oh. and then he quoted me in the paper and I said, oh, that's awesome. Season's over, but that's awesome. Now here's what you're going to do, Covington. Next season, I'm going to go down. You're going to take me down. I want Mickey Hatcher's autograph on my newspaper. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so he got to get me down there. And I was, I've was i been around stars such as yourself. I've worked with stars, you know, on movie sets and stuff like that. But, I mean, I was down there with the Dodgers. I know. And, and it, it was, it was no, awesome. There's it nothing was, now. It was nothing. I remember Oral Hershiser when he found out I was there, and he said, boy, I bet you that must have been scary. You must have been nervous working that case. And I said, no. Down here, I'm nervous and scared. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Nervous and that, it, it was, that was it. I was sitting in the dugout with those guys for a second while they were warming up. It was awesome. It's, it, it's, it's like no other – I mean, I guess if people aren't Dodger fans, baseball fans, like you go – I don't know if the Dodgers do what – with the for the fans, they used to go back in the days. They would on Sundays they would sign stickers, 
that were like, that were a baseball, mm-hmm. and it said Dodgers at the bottom, and you could wait in line, and then the current Dodge Steve Garvey or somebody would sign the the ball sticker and give it to you, and oh, they would before cool. the games they had them doing shit. I don't think wow. you get those guys to fucking do anything. Sign your balls thing. now. Yeah. That fucking be like. <laughs> yeah. Well, the whole fat experience. What about uh, uh, the current current players? Uh, I, I'm in there with Cody Bellinger and JT. You know, I, uh, those guys. Uh, they're they're leading right now. And right, since you don't, I'm just since pulling you're not, for. Since you're not Seuss. taking that fucking hint, say I'm pulling for. <laughs> All right, so I got you a gift because this is uh, before you go on your own. On your own podcast. The, gift, the real gift. Yeah. Sponsored by Gordon's the Fisher. Gordon's Fisher. The beef squasher. Okay. I know you were in the military. This is my gift. I know you love the Dodgers. It's signed oh. by. Shit, who is it? I can't even. <laughs> Clayton Kershaw. Clayton Kershaw. Wow. A sign. Listeners, that's Clayton, a now there's a real cool hero. Camo pattern. That's a real hero who does stuff for everybody, kids around the world. Fuck, I'm about to talk about him. I'm talking but, about it's a gift but for look you. At, but look at this is for me, from you, and it's. Uh-oh. Thank you. I, he's already, Priceless. He's already what? Priceless. Uh, already Priceless. Ha- half the beer in. There's going to be one of those. Yeah. Priceless. Be crying, oh, yeah. Boy, am I glad I, this is going to be hey, a Hey, that's keeper. all right. It's going to be a keeper. I told you the wrong side. Look at that. No, that's I all right. It's all right. It's great. I should have. I got another one the right size, but that one's just a gift. Like, uh, I should have said cabezón. <laughs> no, I do, that, but that was just a more of a, 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 oh, a gift. All right. That's, thank so you. That, so that's memorabilia. Yeah. And, and that's, then that's memorabilia. just part one. Since I, that's just, this is a two-part. This is a two-parter. And the other one, I'm already kind of figured it with this beer in. Uh, uh, we got the. Let me know about. Turn on the. All right, the so so here because of uh, your anniversary today. Oh, it's not anniversary. It's fucking around. I'm all because I'm I have my little sling. I think I took the right one. Got to pull up the shoe. This hard. is uh, the new. You know when Dick Van Dyke when he used to fall and sometimes he. Oh yeah yeah yeah. He made it around. <laughs> look at that. There you go. Oh, you got Jesus. you in the show art. The, the odd couple. Look at the same guy Skip from Atlanta drew you a. Oh man! And there they are. Thank you. <laughs> one dude that don't leave the house, and the other one the wife's got by the fucking short hair. <laughs> <laughs> Together. <laughs> fucking hey, man. Thank hey, you. you've been a great. Thank I mean, you, brother. It's just you, you just brought a whole other energy to this whole thing. This is uh, now when someone goes missing, I got fucking somebody to talk to instead of that fucking dog <laughs> feet on my feet. What about when no. you go missing for a week? Well, I go missing. <laughs> hey, I didn't go out, man. <laughs> I don't know why that it is. Uh, I think it was hot. I like it, huh? Hey, life has been good to me. You know, it's, it's, it's fun, man. It's, it's awesome. It's That's been great. fun. The, the podcast, people people love it. Oh, yeah. And we're Leo, they love you. Leo here. Cabrón. <laughs> he said, I met him when I was 11. Where well, I never let him ranch. <laughs> <laughs> now we inter- now we're interviewing that as the poll quote for the episode. That's the one right at the very top. <laughs> oh, man. Because, you know, even something so innocent, you can't probably say anymore. Yeah. You go, how'd you guys meet? Uh, you know, I was six when I met George. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Where? You know what I mean? You can't. Oh, yeah. And yeah, also, with, uh, speaking of, uh, you know, because I don't talk to my, I don't talk to any of my neighbors. You know, bad, bad thing. The first time I moved, when I moved, the first time I moved in, I moved in, first time I moved in, I cut the trees because they hadn't been cut in forever. And then the neighbor called and said, hey, you know, I'm unhappy that you cut these trees, you know, they're on my yard. And then he started to debate me about, you know, his privacy and all that shit. And uh, that was probably the first week I was in the house. And I don't think that guy, I think he moved. I think he moved within the last six months. But where the house is kind of far even to just have a neighbor, me and that dude were never going to be cool. Because I said, hey, man, you need to go home, man. Because, you know, what are the disputes? Some are now, de- right. now deadly now because yeah, of yeah. Instagram. Everybody's filming everything. That one yeah. time over there, I think in Buffalo, where the dude shot. It was a man and his a woman and his husband or wife. And then they, they got into it. The dude went to the house and came back and started shooting. And they went back and got another gun. I mean, you can't. Oh, it is like a dispute. recent video. Like yeah. the past couple. I remember seeing that. That was insane. Yeah, just I walked across you the can't dispute with neighbors, you know. Don't better look away. Just, you know, I I, I told somebody and, and I was thinking about it because I've been asked a lot. You know, 
a lot of questions on this. I'll put you on neighbor next door. Uh, does anybody know where I could sell this corn at a farmer's market? And then citizen, <laughs> I'm a hit. <laughs> go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And, and then some of these people are, are just plain nasty. You know, oh, man. Uh, Ramirez fans, hey, you should be dead, not him. And yeah, they go on. And so I get a lot of questions. Hey, does it bother you that all these people are talking nasty? And I just tell them, no, nah, I just ignore it. You know, because if if you answer them or give them a response, you know. then they won. You know, if you ignore it, if somebody gives you the finger and you see it, you get pissed off. The guy who gave you the finger, he won. Right. He got a reaction out of you, and that's what they're looking for. If you just ignore it like he didn't see it, well, then he loses. He's pissed uh, off because he doesn't com- notice it. Completely. Dude, dude, did you learn that at the academy, or is that uh, social from your last six months on social media? No, no, I just learned that in life. Because, yeah. In yeah. life. I, nobody taught me that in the academy. And What did they teach in the academy about... Anything about like um, mind stuff, you know? Any, any the, the Jedi about, mind tricks, mind right? control. Like, how do you steal I wonder, yourself? I wonder, psychological. Uh, uh, you know, what I say, like hypothetical. Like only Latinos answer hypothetical questions. You know, the cop comes and he goes, "Do you know anybody that would uh, want to see her disappear?" Huh, George? Do you know anybody that want, would want to see her disappear? <laughs> the fuck are you asking me for? I don't know. It, that's a, a hypothetical question. No, but he is asking, "Do you know anybody that would be better off in the life if she wasn't here?" <laughs> No, they Us. didn't teach you. They just said, be prepared for people yelling at you. They used to get in your face all the time. And they're to get all a reaction. lying. They're all fucking lying. I yeah, think, they, right? they, they try to get a reaction. And your job is just to shut them out so you go along and try and uh, get by without getting in trouble. Because you, you are human. You know, eventually you, you get pissed off. Enough is enough. Do they teach you, like, uh, body language and all that stuff? Like, yeah. They're com- completely right yeah. in somebody's face and somebody's – and how they – they, they fucking dry mouth of those guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Looks up into the right. It's a lie. Up into the right. I, 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 exactly. You know, I used to teach. Uh, yeah. I've taught all all over the U.S. on interviews and interrogations, and there is that body language up and to the left, up and to the right. You know, oh, are shit. they are they thinking? Are they lying? Are they right handed? Are they left handed? You know, are they they have darting averting eyes? You know, do they big gulp? You know, dry lips? You know, Richard Ramirez. He was a finger tapper. He did that, and if he and if he took his anxiety level up, his, his fingers would start going wow. faster. Oh, so wow. you just learn. Uh, those are you, you, once you're more advanced, they call those kinesics indicative of deception. When you're a lying piece of shit, these things come up, <laughs> and you can't control them. He he probably didn't even know he was doing that. No, he didn't. Yeah, yeah. like I'm a foot tapper. Like I, I, I give it away real quick. I'm like foot foot tappers, yawners. Just giving them time to make up an excuse, a lie. You know, some people, you, know, trip, you you ask people, you know, what's the first thing when I talk about your grandmother, what's the first thing that comes up? What, what, your first thing about In your, my head? Yeah. Her, her, okay, retorts to me. <laughs> there you are, see. I want to be a comedian. What, uh, you want people to laugh? Let me go get your fucking first grade pictures. <laughs> see, so I could tell if I wanted to interview you and you were a suspect or something, or you were a witness, you're an audio person. You hear. That's right. You hear things. I am audio person. If, if somebody comes up, what, what about your what about your grandma? What do you think? Oh, she was so sweet. She was kind, always baking for us, making us go. There's somebody that's kinesthetic, you know, heart, you know, right in here. They're, and yeah. if they said she was a beautiful lady, they're visual. So you try to figure oh, wow. out what people are, and then you play with their anxiety level up or down, or if you're their witnesses, you know, you lead the questions towards what their strong points are. There's one I didn't know. I didn't know mm-hmm. by the answer that you could tell whether visual or audio or... Yeah, just a couple of questions. Because of what I said, yeah. the way she... Okay, and yeah. somebody said... No, that's super cool. I've never heard anything like that. I, like, I started thinking of my grandma, and like, I just went to facts, right? Like, uh, lives on a farm, lives in Nebraska, been in the same house for yada dada. See, and all this time you thought Walking I was just another overweight Mexican. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Silence out. of the lambs when I, when I was 15. No, Silence of the lambs over in the farm. <laughs> <laughs> Octavia, Nebraska. <laughs> hey, this is a good day. That's, a good day. <laughs> That's cool. Also, and I got another one for when you go solo. Eh? We do. We have that, that one isolated. We can, we can give you the file. Or when you get your own podcast, you know. because, you know, they'll be calling Yo soy crime or something like that. I already <laughs> t- I reserve Yo soy crime dot com. Uh, you'll get your you'll get your full engulf. You haven't got the picture from that guy yet. No, he, st- he said damn, he sent. He said he sent. Well, he, what he did He's was probably he, walking it across the U.S. He, he wanted it. He wanted to finish another one, not not a painting, just a drawing. And, and it's not even. A, I mean, it's not a. It's not like someone somebody. Sh- you know, the Mona Lisa is like as big as that. Yes, yeah, tiny. That it's pad, much smaller right than there. you expect it to be. Yeah. 
This guy, uh, fucking Leonardo da Vinci, man. Like, is that who did that? Yeah, it was Da Vinci. You know, those dudes didn't live that. It looked like they were 75, man, when they were 40. <laughs> and it said it took them 35 years to do the day. How can you fucking start at five? All right, get in there. Yeah. Like he chasing them day. away? He'd do that shit all day long and just revising and doing other projects. It's crazy. There was one that there was one that he said that he was working on. There's one in Rome, Florence, or somebody that it started to talk to him, you know, because I guess they used drugs back then, like oh, opiates. Oh, oh yeah, like yeah, They yeah. found opiates. Or like in the paint even, too? The, There'd be like lead oh, or yeah, some shit in the paint? lead. There's a picture. Oh. There's a black and white picture of, of my dad and myself as a kid. Oh, wow. And he wanted to do, when he did the painting, he says, hey, by the way, oh, I did God. another one just with uh, pencil. He says, that, so I'm sending it at the same time. That guy's a talented artist. That's great. <clears throat> and he's <clears throat> the he, gentleman you were talking about in the last podcast who is doing yeah. portraits, whatnot. And, he, and this guy said, we have him on? Yeah, yeah, uh, in this yeah. trailer, didn't they have electricity oil in this trailer? Where does he live? Where does <laughs> Tennessee. He live? <laughs> oh, that's Drawing by candlelight. Well, uh, 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 with a can <laughs> I'm over here. <laughs> he listens to the podcast too. <laughs> ah, great. Yeah, I think he's a he's a D Daniel Parks, and he's just he's just a a, a big. He appreciates your he, work exactly. That, that's all it was, and he said uh, he was getting ready to quit painting. He just was going to stop and give it up, and when he saw. The reaction that we had to yeah. the one, he just said, "You've just validated what I'm doing. It keeps me going." So isn't that yeah? I, I hope so. Yeah, yeah, well, I think so. That's awesome, that. and, and I hope, I hope, when we do this, uh, I hope he gets some validation back there where he's from. You know? But you know, I don't think you know. It's so funny, man. Like you know, social media is. I mean, I'm not sure. You know, I don't know, man. At my age. If I wasn't doing what I was doing, whether I'd be at, whether I'd even have a Facebook account. Because, you know, I was at the house trying to learn how to play hot for teacher at like 17 hours a day. I'm still in the beginning. And um, I'm not sure if I would want to let people know about me if I wasn't doing this. Like, in the beginning, I think in the beginning of Facebook, they would say, hey, we're out to dinner at uh, Dave and Buster's. They go and fucking rob <laughs> yeah. your house, man. Because <laughs> yeah. you were telling people mm -hmm. that you weren't that you weren't home. Yeah. So people that post live or wherever, with, what they told us is like, don't ever post like where you're at. Make it be like from last week or some shit that they don't know where you're at. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's because I'm, I'm, I try to be conscious. Of, I don't post anything. On, on Facebook, but I got to watch my kids. I got to tell them, hey, I don't want people knowing where I'm over here. I'm over you know, here. I'm, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm a, not a real prankster, but I'm just going to tell you, I was trying to do something and I, I, could, I was trying to get a pair of those Abia uh, 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 shoes uh, uh. and put them outside your window. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So as we're getting back to normal and people are starting to meet in person again or not in person, but after the year we've all had, I think uh, anything that resembles anything normal is going to take time. So here's what's happened. If you're overwhelmed at all, you're not alone. It's important to feel support from people that you may know and not know. Support doesn't have to be somebody that that you particularly know. An encouraging word, a gentle hand. I can uh, We all talk about friends and experiencing issues with our friends, but uh, you know your friends will not always give you the advice <laughs> that you need. I can love because uh, you got to get unbiased feedback. If somebody knows you, what are they going to tell you, man? To get your life together, they're going to be like, no, you guys will be fine. You're living in your car. Uh, a licensed professional and somebody, I mean, it's, this is the age we're living in, that uh, you can find somebody on Talkspace Online and actually, you know, you can get better. When you're at a low point, you think you're alone, you're not alone. Me and Gil are right there. Right there. <laughs> Two honks and fuck it, we'll come out. Refreshed and ready to go. And, uh, you know, we all need help sometimes, and asking for support is, I think, really tough. I don't, I'm not, you know, Gil, I'm not sure. I can say this honestly. I would rather starve than ask somebody for help. <laughs> Just because nobody ever made it fucking comfortable to ask anybody for help, man. If you said, hey, man, can I, you know, you think I could, what? And you make fucking everybody can hear you. I think, you know, if, if I could stay, what do you have to order to stay? Man, that stuff is all bad. Eh? Until now, uh, Talkspace offers individual and couples therapy because what's better than going in there by yourself is going in there with a loved one. 
Que la verga. In addition uh, to medication prescribed reviews, a lot of times people get prescribed medicine that it's not always the best for them. Uh, talk space will work around your schedule and they're at your convenience. I, I'm not, sh you know, I order stuff online from like Vistamart, you know, where they order groceries, but I think talk space right here, I thought they, they, they can deliver wellness is better than having, you know, fucking cupcakes. <laughs> okay. Whether you experience depression, like Gil right now, anxiety, los dos, two for two, Talkspace is the number one online therapy platform to get help and to sort you out with whatever issue you have. I'll take you down to number. It's, you know what? I think the word issue is even, like, misleading. It's very, it's vague. If someone says, hey, man, you know, I can't accept a compliment, and they tell you to go fuck yourself, you're healed. So start feeling better with a single message. Match with a licensed therapist when you go to Talkspace.com and get 100 off your first month with the promo code Oh My God High all uh, uh, capitals. And that's $100 off when you use Oh My God High at Talkspace.com. I've been in therapy for 20 years with the same guy. I would go to Talkspace as soon as I could turn this phone on when Gil takes off. And that's 100 off when you visit the code OMG High at Talkspace.com. Oh my God! I... <laughs> Fill with, <laughs> with candy, so, the, so we turn a bad thing into a good thing. That's hilarious. <laughs> one one shoe chocolate, though, uh, jelly beans. Yeah, his so, fans would like that. So so he's been gone since 2014, 2013. 2013. And then the people that I don't know who thought he didn't serve as much time in prison, he died. Like yes. people were disappointed that he died because they wanted him to be in prison. Is that right? They wanted him to like suffer. They wanted him to suffer. Sure, yeah. they wanted him to suffer. Oh, he took the easy way like, out. We didn't get to kill him. You know, they they wanted to no. kill you twice. Sort if of he's a devil yeah. worshiper and he goes to hell, that about those like going to fucking. <laughs> huh? It's like going Welcome to home. the fucking Hamptons. Hey, yeah. I'm here. I, I found out how many <laughs> how many fans he has today. Man, he's got a fan following that is that is killer you know <laughs> <laughs> right. oh. hey so you, know, you put them on the poster and I'll come with the for the stage the uh uh what's the number again 818 533 1843 818 533 1848 3 1843 1843 fucking dyslexic motherfucker there you go we're flashing it on the screen right, it's look. in the bottom and then okay so if you're a Richard Ramirez fan or a fan let's see if you're a fan of law enforcement we talked about defund the police. I didn't know what that meant until last week. If, if you're a fan of law enforcement, call us and tell us why. And if you're a Ramirez fan or fans of the devil, the, de the devil, mm. call and tell us why. I think. Yeah. Any any serial killer. Anybody he, that's like, you know, uh, yeah, any serial killer out there that, uh, you know, needs a, a good handle. Gil's up there creating other real Gil Carillo. Number two, part two. So, so you know, because, I mean, this guy's been gone for eight years, and he's got fans. Oh, he's, he does. I mean, some are very kind. You know, some say, you know, I'm a, I'm a Richard Ramirez fan, but what you did was very good. Thank you very much for all you did. Hey, but can you tell me, because I think he's really handsome, would he still, if you wouldn't have caught him, do you think he'd be alive and loving today? <laughs> you know, others he'd be my type. so sinister, <laughs> hey, you thought, you know, because I blocked a few people. And and I block them if if it looks like well, and they're going to be nasty. That way, you just don't have to see. You ever it. reporting? You can report people too. Like if you take a screenshot, we'll probably, you take a screenshot. Oh, I didn't know that. See, so I told you this shit's yeah, new yeah. to me. Hey, even he's, you know what? He's more concerned looking at his increase in followers than yeah. the minutia of having an account. Yeah, I just, I just block them out, and this guy says, "Don't you don't stand for the state? You're not going to get rid of me. I, you know, you should be dead instead of him. You're no good. You locked him up. Yeah, I, okay, just block him. That way, I, I don't have to deal with him. That one was me. Eh? And then he came back, and he says. I told you, you thought you were going to get rid of me. You came back with another name. You didn't get rid of me. I'm still here, and I'll be here for the rest of your and block. Block it again. <laughs> you know, and, and I don't care. I, I don't know the guy. I don't know what he's got to, you know, I. I what I, is that, though? What, I, have, I have no what's idea. What's the psychology of, of a hater? Of, what, what's, what's the mind behind somebody that, you know, you'd be surprised if you look at the fucking time that they're hating you. They're fucking hating you at the best time of the day when the sun's coming. The sure. fuck can be? Who can be mad at fucking sunrise? You Even know, if you're go, you feel you're happier. I used to drive home when the sun was coming up, and I was happier than if I had slept ten hours and the sun was coming up. 
I'm one of those. What the fuck? I mean, these guys don't realize, you know, they're not going to hurt me. I've seen more death, you know, right. in, in combat. I've seen more dead bodies out here. What they say, you know, is not going to bother me. But is it is it meant as a, it's meant to be acknowledged. Yeah. I it's mean, a, I, And if you don't give them acknowledged, they, they you, give up. I right. hope. Have, have you experienced this as a comedian? I've heard a lot of comics talk about this, George, where it's like people will tweet you, people will like write something to you that's like super hateful, and as soon as you give them any amount of attention, they're like, oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't think you'd actually respond. I'm such a huge fan. Okay. It's just like, it's like lashing out. It's this is the like, worst tweet I ever read about to me. <laughs> I, ho I wish that I had a time machine so I could go back to the day that you were born, and before you were born, get a hanger and put it in your mom's vagina and kill you before you were ever born. Damn. And a tweet, and I was like, fuck! <laughs> I was like, wow, man, I mean. That and, that guy's, and I'll tell you right now, that guy is looking for a reaction out of here. Yeah. Whatever your reaction is, 818-533-1843. Because you know... And there's a big Toma behind the it. <laughs> hashtag. Oh. Hey, so... But that's all it is. If you were in school and they'd be like, I'm not touching you and they're doing all that shit. Sure. It's just on another... Yeah. But if somebody, you know, 4.30 in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, whatever, that somebody's taking time out of the beginning of the best fucking gift to wake up and pull that shit, like... And no you consequences. Wouldn't. You're on the internet. You're totally anonymous. I mean, maybe the person who tweeted this to you, they were just like an egg profile, or maybe it was their actual profile, but like, what's what's actually going to happen to this person? Probably nothing. nothing. So what's to stop them from being as horrible as humanly possible to maybe get a reaction from someone who they care sure. about? And and the good part about it so far... But I mean, is, you can't have a lot of them, though. Do, do you no, there, there's them? a lot of fans, but fortunately... And I don't read, because I'm not up on this social media stuff. I'm getting... Instagrams from a lot of people that are saying they've seen it and they're bad mouthing those people that are saying shit about me. So let them take it on if oh, they want. Oh, because they're all reading each other's, right? That's yeah. Right. Yeah. So I, I don't, uh, I read mine. I'm lucky I get to do that. Well, you know, as a fan of, of I think if you were a, let's say we just stick to baseball, if you were a baseball player and you went to Dodger Stadium and you saw Sandy Koufax, you would say, oh my God, man, there's Sandy Koufax. He was, you know, in the Hall of Fame and one of the most amazing pitchers ever. Or if you went mm -hmm. and saw Kareem goes to baseball games or if you saw Magics at the game, mm -hmm. they don't have to be of that sport to still be interesting to people as fans, right? So you and I right here, you know, the thing came out in January. Everybody's seen it, double seen it. I've seen it a few times. And there's a guy named Deadbug, like this dude's on YouTube. And it's, I mean, it's, Dead bug, it's it's gory, and it's factual. Because they don't try to, you know, something that he just tells what really happened, and maybe has a picture. There's like the Star 80 girl, and then there's like people who died in porn, and there's people that are like neighbors that take people out and then try to live a life like that uh, dude. That especially those neighbors that cut the trees down. Oh yeah, I'll be like that. Eh? So he's just like a YouTuber who makes just like just sort of like these like macabre, morbid macabre stories, and he, and, like he that. Had, yeah. and he fucks with everybody. He'll say, the, 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 you know, there's a lady laying there. He's like, well, you know, I'm gonna say it right now. It's probably not my type. You know, it's just like 90 <laughs> years old. And then uh, he, they showed everybody, and the only people he didn't make fun of was you and Frank. He didn't say anything about you and Frank. He'd go, yeah, look at this guy. Like, make, he fucks with everybody. <laughs> and they showed your your video, like, hey, this is what we're looking for. All, all stiff. Forgot There's a man out there. <laughs> <laughs> Take a look over here. You know. Oh, those are the videos they did in the... In, 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 in the, the sheriff. That yeah, was brilliant. Yeah. It was brilliant. It was the, you know, the fucking... You know, a lady invented hand sanitizer. We could have had a Latino invent the internet. Too busy making VHS copies. Well, that was but before the it, internet, yeah. They, they said you like made 25, they had to send it to every... Every station right now. And we, we did that because I, I said, hey, we gotta do something, Let me, I'll do a video. Because I, I just happened to be at one of the stations and I listened to some sergeant doing a briefing and he was full of shit. He didn't know what he was talking about. And I'm saying if we got 25 stations out there mm -hmm. and everybody's giving different opinion, you know, doing it no right. good. Why not, let's make a video, let's get it out. Everybody gets the same information. So that's what we did. We did two of them, and no need for a third one. He got caught. Yeah. And there's people that are upset. Listen, if you're a criminal and you get caught, there's a lot of criminals that haven't been caught. So it's like, you know, hey, you, you, you know, fuck you, you caught them. It's, there's still a lot of, you know, 
You think he would be killing? No, he wasn't going to last that long. He, no. I knew we'd catch him, and he was getting tired. Yeah. He said he was getting tired. <laughs> he said. It's always a matter of time, right? You get complacent, you make mistakes. I feel like and he knew he, quote, would, I've heard he, he knew that you know, it was only a matter of time before we got him. Yeah. He was getting tired, and he knew it was a matter of time before we got him. Either, yeah. either we'd get lucky, or he'd screw up. Yeah. And he did what it... Yeah, he both. He, uh, he he did both. When he got back, I can't Im- I can't imagine. There's two things I can't imagine the way how high you jumped when the phone rang behind you in the middle of the night when you thought somebody was in the house. Oh, I, I think I, uh, Netflix laid over three three thirty in the morning. Scared and, the shit and, out and of me. The, you're by yourself. The family's moved away just for safety, and then you're in there walking. I think you said when you're back to every wall, which I think yeah. is the, the right the right way to do. Yeah. It. Sure. So. It's the middle of the night. You think you hear something. You might see something. You don't. I mean, he's around that area. Sure. And then the fucking out of silence, the phone rings. You probably went. Bleep. Oh, it scared the bejesus out of me. It scared the shit out of me. I was. It. it I was. <laughs> my stomach was nauseated. Ceiling, I was sweating. <laughs> oh know, man. It, it, it was tough. And then they went. Fuck. <laughs> it scared me. And they said, call up. Uh, then Linda Arthur, she was a very dear friend of mine, worked in our crime lab. She yeah. was a cop. And she says, hey, lady across the street from me just got raped. I think it's something you're working on. Because she had been out some of her crime scenes. So I went down her house, and it was. Sophie was a uh, wow. victim. Incredible. And being okay. conscientious, when I woke up, I looked at the clock. Whenever this was going on, I'm looking. It's 3.30 in the morning, and I'm saying to myself, God damn it, what's he doing right now? This guy's driving me nuts. She'll testify because she was a nurse. She also, like cops, kept track of time. Uh, she says, I looked at the clock, and it was 3.30 in the morning when he was starting to sodomize me. Ooh, wow. That's spooky. Damn. That's and so spooky. It, it, was, uh, it was good. I used to look at the clock when I was with women, and I would be like, if it's like 11.52, I'd say just 12.02, 12.01. <laughs> just, just, just make it to like We're a new day. <laughs> and like I said, I did it all day. Can I it like in nine minutes. Okay, what else? Grant, what do uh, we have? All right, yeah, so uh, we're excited. We're going to do a segment we haven't done in a minute and with you at all, Gail, called... It's actually had a couple names. Actual news, right? We basically we find funny, weird news stories. Police tend sure. to be involved in some capacity. We just <laughs> read them and we sort of get. What do you call it? Actual news. <laughs> I mean, because we're surprised that this shit is God real. Uh, this is called actual news. This, yeah. this is actual news. That's actual yeah. news. That, this with is actual news. That's the LA. That, that's the signature right there. Twenty-two. That that was not to wear. That's just to. No, that's on my wall. You know, I have a I have a a bat signed by autograph by Andre Ethier. Oh, yeah, yeah. A, a friend of mine uh, met him there at the uh, Dodger Stadium. He's seen television. He got He was set. an interesting dude, man. Uh, Andre? Yeah. He, 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 nice guy. Half French and half Latino? Shit, I don't know. He's from Arizona. <laughs> I, he's a good guy. <laughs> I, I think he's, yeah, he's Just a good Arizona, guy. Just Arizona. He never his... really came off yeah. as a, as no, a guy. No, nice like guy. A... The, uh, the guy that worked there took me on a, a little private tour, Jerry Turner, who at that time was the, uh, he was in charge of the visitor's uh, dugout. He made oh, sure yeah, they yeah. all the equipment and the food, everything was, they were taken care of. Uh, he's been with them, I think, something like 43 years. He's got three World Series rings and a couple of uh, pennant rings. He's now in charge of the umpire's room. And oh, yeah. Shout out to Jerry. Jerry says, hey, would you let me give you a tour. I said, if I can take my grandson. I might know fucking Jerry. And, Jerry. and he knows everybody there. I said, if I can take my grandson with me, he says, let's do it. And he said, okay, bring him down. He took me down. He said, okay, where do you want to start? I said, hey, it's your tour. Where do you want to start? He says, you want to meet Vince Scully? And I said, holy shit. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's better than the Pope, brother. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> so was... went up, introduced me, took me up to the press box, meet Vince Scully, the guy. He was doing a video, you know, one of these commercials. And was Jerry he goes, wine or no? He was no. Okay. And Jerry turned his stick and said, hey, Jerry, you got a minute? I got a couple of friends here that want to meet. Sure, bring them in. And when we were Crazy. done, and, and Vin was so... Damn, man. It just so accommodating, so nice. Yeah. Genuinely nice. And when we're done, one of the video guys says, hey, Jerry, anytime you feel like inter- uh, interfering with another commercial we're doing, he says, come on back anytime. <laughs> and they started laughing. And Vince Scully just says, Jerry, anytime you want to come back, you know you're welcome. And he says, thank you, Vin. We walked out. We get out. Manny Mota stops. Hey, Jerry, I need a favor. Okay, Manny. Hey, this is Gil Carrillo. As soon as I'm done with Gil, I'm giving him a tour. I'll come back and check up on you. 
We end up down in the locker room. He takes me around. There oh, is uh, Kershaw, uh, the guy that we got rid of from Cuba. Go uh, say I'm a Puig. Puig. Yeah, Puig. Puig was sitting there in his BVDs. This guy's chiseled, man. A chiseled. He was chiseled. Uh, Gonzalez is sitting there with earphones on, his feet up, just relaxing before the game. Takes over. There's Andre Ethier. He says, Andre, the skill crew. Hey, I've heard all about you. Hey, pleasure to meet you. Hey, come with me. Took us into some where all the bats are, the manager locker. Oh, yeah, equipment yeah, room. the equipment manager, yeah. And so he took me in there, took out a bat for myself, one for my grandson, autographed oh, wow, him, took man. pictures with us. Uh, just a great, that's, great man. That's pretty good. He was at the ball game the other day. They they got him on an interview. Yeah, he he was good. visiting me. Nice guy. We got him. So this will be treasured, and this will go up on my wall. Good. All right. There's a lot more where that came from. That's great. I don't know. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, blah, 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 so I think I have a little more. bit of that. All right. <laughs> I hey, talked forever at the beginning, didn't I? You're talking, I never talked that much. This is a podcast, baby. It's all about uh, yeah. talking. Uh, I can jump right into the articles if you guys want. Jump. Uh, all right, jump. So uh, this one from theinsider.com. Uh, so 14 years after a sexual assault in Tampa, a man has been charged with rape because he entered his own DNA into a genealogy database. Think like a 23andMe sort of thing. Here's the article. All right. Police detectives in Tampa Bay said they've arrested a suspect in a 14-year-old rape case after using the database of genealogy testing website to match DNA evidence. <laughs> uh, the victim can now have some closure in life, said the assistant Tampa police chief, Ruben Delgado. According to police reports, it took place back in 2007 at the University of Tampa. The victim told detectives she was intoxicated, may have been stumbling around with the suspect, who they now know to be Jared Vaughn, offered to walk her to her dorm room where he proceeded to commit the crime. DNA evidence was collected at the time, but didn't find any matches until 2020 when they revisited the case. It now included stuff like wow. GED match and family tree, which are just ancestry, ancestry websites. I thought they couldn't share that information. There's another one that they're looking out for. I, don't, I thought they couldn't share the information unless you... I don't they, know. Maybe they, you take the box. They, that's how they or got... Or they do. They, the, the guy that was killing the girls here, the... Golden State Killer, Gold, is that what it was? Golden State Killer, <laughs> the, the local one. The, the, black, Golden State, come on, the, the, Golden the, the black guy that was doing it right here got a bunch of, they they did the familiar DNA like that. And that's they ended up getting it from a website. They ended up, who was that? Uh, do you know, do you know, the, the grip was the grip, grip sleeper. Uh, oh, yeah, the grip. A Aaron, Aaron getting all the answers. Man, Aaron, that, don't go to his pocket, I'll say. <laughs> You'll see all this. All the fucking zapatos are missing. Uh, <laughs> That's how they did it. All right, so, so, all right, listen, everybody, I guess you better, you know, don't think that they're not watching anyways. If you're talking about barbecue stuff or the 4th of July or whatever, yeah. you're, fucking two minutes later you'll get a fucking text from Sprouts telling you yeah. what they yeah. got for the 4th of Don't assume anything is private. And nothing That's is that private. That's my take these days, yeah. Yeah, right? Nothing is private. That's right. Was, is it against the law to eavesdrop on somebody? Or you have to let them know you're there. I don't know. You have to. You can't let's say you go by a win, Let's say you go by a window and you hear two people talking. You have to say, "Hello, I'm Sheriff." No, as long as Young you're in, as long as you're in public, they're they're doing it. And you're in public property. No. Okay. But the eavesdrop on any phone calls or anything like that, then it takes a court order. And some, as in some states, have like a one party consent versus two party consent, where it's like maybe I can take my side of a phone call without asking, but in other states. Like, you have to have both I don't parties. Know, I don't know. That's about like other, more of a civilian thing. I don't, right? I don't know about other states. I just know about here. Yeah. yeah. If we're going to do it without a search warrant, they got to know that you're recording. Yeah. That's why when you call up all these places, you know, doctors, obviously, yeah. you know, they, hey, this message maybe should be warranted. exactly. So if you go through somebody's car and you find something without a search warrant, and it's admitted as evidence, since you didn't have a search warrant, would they throw that case out? It depends what you were searching for at the time, and whether it's relevant. If you're looking for dope. And when there's dope, you find a gun. Well, that gun is still admissible because you were in search of dope. If you find a tape and there's writing on it with your your murder <laughs> victim's name on it, well, then what you got to do is you got you confiscate it, but then you write a warrant to get the contents of the tape. Ah, you just you can't watch them to get no, the warrant. No, wow, man, that's crazy. It's called pre-search warrant search. Pre-search warrants? No, no, that's what some people would say. You, <laughs> yeah. you got to write a search warrant. Hey, you know what? You got to tell us the truth because more people will be out there going, "That's a pre-search warrant <laughs> search." The pocket of the, the poison tree. tree you're not allowed. That's a pre-search. <laughs> Taser. <laughs> yeah, all those. You know, you don't you don't know about about those things, but I, you know, how about this? How about when you guys are sitting in what car kind of car was that? Like a Matador, a police uh, car, in a black and white, or in a no, in a 
detective car. Were oh, there really? Matador cars? Yeah, there, there, there were Matador cars before. And then we went to Chevy, Chevy Caprices, and they went to Ford Crown Vicks. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the beginning, those were all, they were all American. That was the first LA, first LAPD car. What was that? A, that was like a, a Ford or a Dodge or some shit? Shit, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Depending on what year it was. They went to, they, yeah. We did Chevys for a while. When was the crime? In, in, in the mid-70s, we were using Chevy Novas in patrol, and they used them for dick yeah, cars. Yeah, that's too. right. That's right. So, that's right. So, you know, I had a friend of mine that I said that uh, was alleged to have committed this crime, and then, you know, he walks out. We walk him out, and he looks around, and he goes, look at all these cops out here. And me, I don't fucking see anything. You know, I'm, in, <laughs> I'm in junior high. He, we're the same age, and he's up for murder, and I'm just dr- walking by to say hello. And and I was like, I don't see any fucking cars. And then when we drove away, there was probably in all those Matadors and a, uh, and a Nova and dudes out there, you know. I remember for years they used uh, Plymouth Furies. Yeah. Because you'd hear them going, hmm, hmm. <laughs> they make a lot of noise. They didn't Flurry. move that fast, but they made an awful lot of awful Do they lot still of noise. make Plymouths? I don't think so. I don't know. It feels like the opposite of everything you'd want in a cop car. Yeah. <laughs> Well, oh, that, yeah. Tell All me right. if you ever encountered this in your. Uh, oh, wait, your... So how do they catch it with with this crema? Oh, that's a, that's not a medical. Crema. <laughs> through so through the database, he submitted his uh, info. It was, I, I don't think they're allowed to say which one he submitted it through, but uh, they were able to just track the DNA because they had reopened the case yeah. and it was a publicly, or I don't know if it was publicly accessible or they subpoenaed it or something like that. Knowing that, would you would you would you apply would you do a test and send your dna in there oh hell no no i think th- that's really the ultimate. that's not footprint. that i'm afraid of anything but it's i don't much. want it involved no. in anything there's no need yeah well i told you they already have everything i've ever put on social media i'm cleaner than safeway chicken i don't care <laughs> <laughs> my creme on my business uh all right so uh if you ever came across anything like this police break up exorcism at pennsylvania home depot uh, so this comes from PennLive.com. Pen. Uh, so police in Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, broke up an exorcism in the lumber aisle of a home improvement store on Monday. Details are scarce on exactly what was going on inside the Home Depot, but police were called around 3.26 p.m. to escort several people out of the store for what was described as bad behavior. Uh, according to the reports, uh, there was an exorcism held for trees that <laughs> had been awesome. turned into lumber. Um, the police blotter said uh, the Facebook page gave a few clues as to what had happened, simply... Uh, what is that? What news does that come from? That's bullshit. That came from probably your, your friends. Like Pen, it's Pen, penlive.com. Uh, <laughs> the, the New York Times of Lackawanna County, I think is what it's uh, called. Uh, I'd, I'd, no. I'd been praying for the trees to get away from the people <laughs> giving the exorcism. Right? And uh, it, it did you make sure to clarify. That, hey, that's just absurd. You do that. Osh, motherfucker. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that whole deal. But you do that shit in Lumber City. True ha- hardware. Get yeah. that shit over there. <laughs> don't bring it in here. Uh, they made sure to clarify no indication the incident had anything to do with these. Hey, is every hot dog girl outside of Home Depot fine? I think that's one of the rules. <laughs> <laughs> nothing to do with the price of lumber was the. Yeah, I wanted to make just, sure because that's maybe maybe skyrocketing. Um, it just sounds something like too, people, people have, have too fetish. much time on their people hands. Haven't but there's people fun. that have fetishes like you know, uh, you know, boy runs exorcism by exorcism tree fetish. <laughs> Yeah, this is not a journalistic enterprise. We do just pull some weird. <laughs> yeah. We find weird headlines and we go from there, uh, which is how we got this one. So this one from foxnews.com. Very reputable, depending on who you ask. Uh, 42,000 pounds of missing pistachios leads to possible illegal <laughs> pistachio operation. Uh, okay, very fun article at the top. What is, is that? Because because was, Monsanto, oh, I probably have, I could get killed. I didn't myself. heard about that on the news Did last you? week. Yeah. Did you? I'm I think sorry. I can get killed. But what do you think that is? Case uh, just, of missing some, pistachios. Just some Mexicans stealing a bunch of pistachios. Those are fucking hard to pick up, though. How many tons? 42,000 pounds of If I gave you two pistachios. packs, well, you'd give one back to me. So that is 21 <laughs> tons. <laughs> 20, uh, yeah. Yeah. 21 tons of pistachios. Yeah, yeah, they were already picked, boxed, everything. In one-ton in one ton sacks, there were 2,000-pound sacks. The plan was to move the pistachios into smaller bags and resell them. Uh, your standard Okay, you know, that, as sad right as that there. is, it's not... You know, like every December when somebody's trying to sneak a hundred dozen of tamales in their luggage and they get <laughs> confiscated by customs and those fucking tamales get thrown out like so many of the young youth of this thing. <laughs> uh, you know, and you can't go over there and I was in Chicago one time and I had a couple of Cuban cigars and this guy's at the bar and he's like, what are, what are those Cubans? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, how about this? He takes out this fucking bag of them and they're all... Cohibas and all the Roma Julietas. And I go, fuck, where'd you get those? I work for customs. <laughs> 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 he said, I work for customs. Oh, he wow. fucking steals them. Come on. They got all the if best you shit think in that the stuff that customs takes away, breast milk, 
Those are uh. and Larry, those are mine. Uh, cigars, all that shit. They take that shit home, man. Oh, yeah. My, my, a fucking, I, you lose your fucking <laughs> iPad, you ain't getting that shit back. And if you get it back, you better look at the pictures that are on it. My dad loves to tell a story about it. he was a kid, and he, he grew up in the, the Bay Area, actually. And uh, some cop, he was like 18 years old, he had a handle of vodka or something in his car. Cop found it for whatever reason, <laughs> and he was just like, all right, I'll let you guys off with a warning, but I'm going to take this with me right here. And my dad was like, all right, you know, enjoy that on your time off. Guy wheeled around, came over, gave him all tickets for, uh, was for it, my minor, minor intoxication oh, or whatever the fuck. Man. He was this close to getting away. He, 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 said something, but he, could, right? he couldn't yeah, help fuck. himself. He had to say something. That's no good. You know, this, this one, I told Howard Stern this one. So, you know, we were in Washington, D.C. We just stayed at, like, whatever, the Holiday Inn or some shit. And on Sunday, when you're done, you try to get something to eat, pizza delivered to the hotel. And uh, we're in there. We, we're smoking weed. <laughs> we order pizza. And the a, a cop car just happened to pull into the front of the Holiday Inn. And the lights were going at the same time that the pizza person knocked. And I go, the cops, because they left, they saw the <laughs> thing. And they took the fucking weed and threw it out of the balcony, and it landed on top of the cop car. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. And you what go down there, the lights are on, and we're looking over the side, and uh -oh. you can fucking see the bag. You didn't even want the pizza anymore. The fuck were, oh, man. <laughs> they had a good night. That shit was crazy. <laughs> Throws it out, it lands on top of Unit 75. That's great. All right, so uh, another one here. We have a, a classic tale of corruption. Uh, this is from <clears throat> the Clarion Ledger, which is a Mississippi-based uh, outlet. That's, so, where, hey, that's where your artist is from. Tennessee? Uh, Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> so report. Representative Stephen Palazzo spent campaign money to fight allegations that he misspent campaign money. Uh, Republican Mississippi Rep Palazzo is using campaign money to pay lawyers defending him in an investigation into whether he misspent campaign funds. Uh, Palazzo, who represents most of southern Mississippi, paid Jackson law firm Watkins and Eager more than 60 grand in December using only campaign dollars, according to financial reports. <laughs> awesome. They're listed as professional <laughs> fees. Uh, Justin Brazell, founder of a campaign uh, transparency group in Jackson, confirmed that the payments were for legal defense. He offered no further comments on the matter, and uh, Palazzo's office, unsurprisingly, did not return a request for comments. Of uh, course, man. Listen, you're not, you don't, you know, you're not going to spend... Your own money, you're going to spend whatever you're stealing or taking from the side. That's what I say. Ah. Right? That's and and right. it looks like he used that all that 60 grand to cover and up Palazzo 20 grand in the, that in he the had Mississippi. Spent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 20 grand he spent uh, renovating a house that he owned on some, some riverfront uh, and proceeded to pay himself. Well, did you expect the attorneys to come to a rundown house? Okay. You know, uh, <laughs> you know for the guy that was uh, <clears throat> my drummer in my talk show band, uh, Robert DiMaggio, of the DiMaggio family. And you know, Bearden and I still talk. So he he had a charity that he was running, and like donating money to kids, and he used some of that money to fund his own life. And I think he got like five years or some shit like that. Mm. He'll be fucking drumming every night in the <laughs> on the skins on the skins. Hit that foot pedal, man. Brother. Listen, man. I don't think I could. I told you, if I was in prison, I'm blowing everybody up. Everybody, line up. <laughs> got, Cell block eleven. I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> the faster I get out, let that thought. Okay. Which uh, one is that yeah, one? sure. Well, we'll do one more here. Uh, okay, this one right. from actually fairly recently. How much time are you trying to kill? Are we close to it? Oh, I'm vamp. Oh, well, uh, when your voicemails after this a little bit. Oh yeah, no voicemails. We're gonna do two hours or one hour. Uh, this is gonna be a two-parter. So bullshit, we're gonna hit a little bit of both. Yeah. There's all yeah. Uh, have you been here for voicemails at all? No. Oh, that's they're, fine. They're so we'll we'll take, what's the number, George? I don't know what the fucking it's number It's right there. 818. No, I covered it. 818-533-1843. Leave, leave us voicemails, ask questions for George and, and Gil. 818-533-1843 on your radio dial. Thank you. Hey. hey, how far do you remember, Ben? You remember, how far do you remember the day of stuff? Like, do you remember the day you first played Little League or? No. Don't say. No, unless it was important. May 5th. Uh, no, yeah. no, I, I don't remember that. But, but I, rem I remember I was in third grade when I kissed my first girl. I remember that, and I ran into her. Uh, <laughs> you kissed her during school, right? One it of the assemblies school. that night. I was in school, and uh, ran into her lately. Yeah, school, man. And, and and she knows my wife knows her. My wife knows the whole family. You know, I knew the brothers. What's that fucking swing or something? And, and I said, uh, <laughs> within the last six months, I said, you know, I still remember that first. You're the first Your girl I ever kissed. That, with your wife right there? Well, yeah, my, that's what I, I didn't think. And my wife says, oh. I can't believe you really said that. 
You know, she didn't say anything then. <laughs> she you know, went to later. And, that's, yeah. a, that's almost like a thumb. Remember, like you said, let me put a thumb tag right here for later on when I have a nail. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that was in the third grade. That. I didn't think any of it. The fucking third grade. What year was that? 19. Shit, that was. Fucking 25. Man, that was, <laughs> no, like in the 50s. I was in the 50s. So that's a long time. Third grade. I, I, didn't you know. even, I didn't even know what an er, I thought an erection was something you built with an erector set at that time. <laughs> you know, I didn't know anything about it. I just remember she was the first girl. I went, and we remained friends. We graduated together. Her brothers, uh, one went to LAPD, one went to the FBI. We were just friends. I don't see her that often. You know, years. It's like hey, man, you don't have to tell, you have to tell me. <laughs> but I think you got to tell a woman out there in the San Diego. <laughs> it was a wrong move, I tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> it is, right? I don't think it doesn't matter what fucking how how much time you were in the third grade. You're probably fucking ten years old. You're like, oh, yeah, it's, it's a fun memory. I don't see how you have to bring <laughs> yeah, that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah trying to trying to rub it in. You're kissing girls. Listen, in the third women grade. want honesty, and then they're the ones in Spanx fucking <laughs> liars. <laughs> that's, that's another fucking tag a, a tagger. Yeah, that's good. That's great. Uh, all right, well, one more, right? Uh, so U.S. Olympian Shelby Houlihan blames burrito for positive yeah, I, drug test. Listen. So I hadn't actually heard about this one until I, I printed the article. You so heard that shit then? Uh, and it was pork. I think what was it? Catch us up. Let's see. Uh, she blames on a pork burrito that she bought from a food truck. Uh, she tested positive for nandrolone, a banned steroid, after submitting for like a, a typical up. drug test. Uh, she competed in the 2016 Summer Games, 5,000 meter, 1,500 meter races, uh, qualified for U.S. Olympic trials, uh, but the ban will effectively bar her from the 2020 Olympic Games in Tokyo that are obviously okay. This not year, not as a fan, but he, let's say it wasn't sport and you heard the details of that. What do you think of that? I'd be, I'd, I'd be screaming BS. <laughs> there, there was a, a wanking bullshit. gesture that hey, he made you, off camera. You ate it. You did it. There's got to be another reason. Look at nobody's ever. Dr I've I've tested for drugs and I eat burritos all the time. <laughs> look at me. Look at this tabernacle. It didn't get like this. <laughs> <laughs> the tabernacle. You know. It's, no, no. But but that you know. I guess it's a viable. I think you know boxers probably had had to start that yeah. back then with it. Well, so so just your 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 opinion as a, a law enforcement. Uh, my my opinion just as an everyday citizen. You know, I I don't buy that she got it from a burrito. How does she know she got it from a burrito? How does she know it That's came a from a burrito? That's, that is the... Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> and that is why Gil Carrillo, real Gil Carrillo, wants to be your <laughs> sheriff. If you're out there in the United States and you like a week with Gil, he'll be the sheriff of your of your county and then take pictures that he'll talk about his reminiscence of... <laughs> uh, it's like that moment at the end of a murder mystery where they're like, tell Cheryl I'm sorry. They're like, I never said it was Cheryl. <laughs> All the dots right! Come together. <laughs> That's right. That's great. And even here at the end of the article, it says... You know um, what? That's a great point, isn't it? It's yeah. the burrito. You wouldn't have known. Yeah. How would the fuck you How would know? How did you know it was the burrito? Awesome. And it Case says, too, closed. other cases like this, the sort of party line is, it ends up being an athlete's personal duty to ensure that no prohibited substance enters his or her body, regardless of, you know, by, by burrito or by other sort of choice. Yeah. But I don't think there's anything Yeah, why couldn't it have been a hamburger? Why uh, hey, a burrito? If she had chorro, she would have ran faster. And yeah. Be, uh, <laughs> I have chorro, which... At my age, that's it. What a, uh, well, you want some voicemails? So drop, pop on the cans. If you guys, we got the headphones oh. right here. All right, we, you want another one? I think we need another one. We can grab you guys another beer or something. Take. What's that? Got more out there. I'm all about also already. Ooh. How great. long did I talk in the beginning? For an hour? Uh, no, we <laughs> haven't even been on for an hour yet. <laughs> <laughs> How those gummies hitting, dude? <laughs> oh man, with the beer, awesome. It's a good. good hey, combo. what's that picture gonna show up? Anywhere we got to wait till the next the, podcast drops. It, it'll be that I'm sending it to the Rich Ramirez fans. <laughs> <of Merced County. laughs> no, we'll send you. The, we'll send it to you. Yeah, we can send you that art. We can that's put that, it up as like the thumbnail when you're on my and stuff like that. That's great. Yeah, he did a good job, huh? The guy Skip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Skip, I met. Uh, I think Skip drew DL on Instagram, and th there's a there's a thing where where Instagram works. Like if you see somebody that's an artist. And all of a sudden you're like, you know, hey, I like the way they draw the, you know, and they'll send you a thing or whatever. Probably good for business, not good for. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to look them up right not, now. Not good if, if you expect to be liked by everybody. Like a lot of people, I think a lot of people uh, do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's think I'm deep in here. Uh, okay. You guys ready to hear some, okay. some voicemails? Let's hear it. And all then right. my daughter left me a voicemail, and we'll hear that one at the end because I think this one, because she was. Oh, cool. on me on fucking TikTok, so I put something up there. Oh, really? I wasn't. I haven't pulled that yeah, one. We'll yet. see. We'll grab if, that. If our deal is in jeopardy, All right. So we ask for, uh, love, advice, everything, in no particular order. Here we go. 
Hey, oh my God, hi podcast. Uh, I'm a huge fan of George Lopez. I've uh, been a huge fan since, uh, oh my God, since I could watch TV. Nice. Um, my okay. dad You're was like, a huge fan of George years Lopez. Old. And ever since then, I just haven't stopped watching his shows. Um, I mean, your show. Oh, fuck it. I have a question. Uh, the question I do have is, I am 25 years old, and I am attracted to this 40-year-old guy that I live next to. And um, my friends are accusing me of having dad issues. Uh, I have my dad. I just feel a certain type of way for this guy. And should I pursue anything or should I just put these feelings away? I think that is a very good question. You know that? I think that's a situation, Gil. Thank God you're here. The manhandler. Da, 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 da. The... Uh, <laughs> The squash, what was it last week? Bug squasher. Uh, no. uh, beef squasher. 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 Um, so what do you think? 25-year-old in love with a 40-year-old? You know what? Potential. For that, first of all, that's really, I don't think it, that big an age difference uh, to make even a situation where for 15 years, I mean. If I were your dad, I'd be saying, Mija, find somebody else a little closer to you, but I'm not your dad. 15 years isn't that much. You know, uh, so so long as he's a he, he's healthy, he's good, good yeah. and a good dude. Well, you know, here's I'm not, I don't think I've ever said this. When I was uh, in the early '70s, <clears throat> my mom remarried a guy that was like 45 years older than she was, Ooh. and it I, that's I, a significant. I couldn't. Guy. I couldn't. I'm like, that fucking dude should be dead. Why are you fucking spending time with him? He could be over here with me. But, you know, it was, uh, and he was, you know, he was in shape, good dude. I mean, this, I think he even still had his fucking baby. Imagine fucking being 85 with your fucking baby teeth. And uh, every time we went somewhere, man. They weren't baby teeth. He's just older, ground down, fucking brother. Ground down. Hey, right? They're on the fucking way out. So every time we went somewhere, man, like I was. Even at that age, I was like, man, this is... This You're is just crazy. trying to scare him. And did my mom have dad issues? I think, yeah. And then, you know, I have them because he wasn't around. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, I mean, doesn't every person have dad Who issues? Who doesn't? Yeah, come Fuck. on. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what dad makes any kid feel like like he's meant to be there? <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, so, so headline, I mean, you guys pretty much approved. When did that happen? Years, not when, terrible. when did that happen when you said... That was my first girlfriend. Was that years ago or just recently? No, no. It was just uh, we went to a funeral oh within the last six months. Oh, my God. All right. Right after they were easing up on COVID because we had to go to the restaurant. It was outdoors. Man. Met, we got to take our masks Kill. off while we were eating. And 50 I said that. years. You made it. Is that That's really maybe the worst thing you've. Uh, it, if I could take anything <laughs> back, that would have been the one that, that I take it back. Yeah. That's the worst, dude. You're my hero. <laughs> oh, man. It's. I, yeah. You know, nobody said I was perfect. <laughs> well, you know, it's not what you meant. You know, it's the thing. You know, it's like we're not on that thing. I don't know what you're looking at that on the screen. I don't think you'll see this. But, uh, that, but you know what I mean? It's like <laughs> you're such a – we're all good dudes. If you're telling the truth, it's like – like I went to the ice house one time when I went back when I was living with Ann, and I said, oh, I saw my first girlfriend or some the first girl I ever told, you know – do you do anal? Can I do no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, question I, one. I, I, you know, listen, I could get anybody else in here, um, but but uh, I said that you know, unbeknownst to me, that it would become a fucking thing forever. Yeah, it, it, and it's nothing. I was. It's nothing. It yeah. was said in innocence. I didn't mean anything. No, never. I I haven't uh, seen the the lady since. Uh, it just and and, <laughs> yeah, it was and a now fact. it hasn't been brought up again. But now that I've talked about it here, I'm no, sure. we'll cut it out. And we'll put we'll yeah. save it for the Christmas reel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll save it for the fucking end of the year blooper. Like. <laughs> I, I haven't thought about her in hours. <laughs> All right, what else? Right. Well, oh, so what, what was the answer so, to that girl? Uh, I mean, so it sounded like you guys were pretty That's much not down for forty. Right? No, I, did, I didn't care. Do a little due diligence. You know, make sure he's not a murderer. What? You know, I, I I don't I don't really mess around with it with with any women anymore but when I did <clears throat> the one time we were eating and this girl was considerably younger I think it was more than 15 years and then uh, when I was coming out of the bathroom I ran you know into the waitress and she said your daughter asked for the dessert <laughs> <laughs> I, gave, I gave it to her I hope that's okay I said no yeah yeah that's fine 
<laughs> That's what she said. Didn't even, you know, maybe, maybe they, yeah. I think they knew if they're, if they're talking about. Was it in, hey, a, in LA, a Hollywood? Was it elsewhere? No, it was. Because I feel like out here the people know they don't do that. No, it was like. <laughs> you don't take that chance. Northwest. You know, and, 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 and this girl, who knows? You know, this girl may have the legs of a 26 year old. So. <laughs> 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 All right, we got, uh, we got another one here. Some more advice. Some more advice. Oh, and this is a good opportunity to say, like, if you're going to leave a voicemail, like the shorter and the more quickly to the question, the better. The easier it is for for us to pull and for to answer. Uh, they're unfortunate ones. They're like two minutes. Oh, you're long. trying to tell them how to leave a. Po- I'm just podcast. saying they're good questions that I, I have to call pass up. Fuck that. <laughs> I got rules that to follow and leave it a mess. Uh, all right, next up. Hey George Lopez, this is Zach from Austin, Texas again. Oops. Yo man, so I got I got another I got I got another question I gotta ask you. Goddamn, <laughs> there's this white boy at my job, right? He got dreadlocks and shit. Man, dog. That's hilarious. The other day, my coworker told me that he wants to be my friend. How do I tell him I don't want to be his friend, but like not in a mean way? Like I don't want to hurt his feelings because I don't mean, know like if he lover likes, me, likes me like that. But I don't go <laughs> like that, man. So what should I do? How do I how do I tell him I don't want to be your friend, but like by not telling him I don't want to be his friend? Tell him to listen to George Lopez when he says "mas puto." <laughs> Yeah, is that does that mean that somebody says, "Hey, I want to be your friend"? That you, that's a bad uh, thing. I don't know. It sounds like maybe this uh, Austin, I think, was his name. It sounded like he didn't necessarily know. It was what Zach, con- and he's from Austin. Okay, there you go. Excellent. Um, I love it. Uh, it sounds like he didn't exactly know what context this guy wanted to be his friend. But uh, I mean, kind of from the white well, guy with dreadlocks thing, he doesn't want it no matter what. I don't think a white dude. I've never seen a, a little putito out there with, with dreadlocks. That's like, so that'll be, be on the that'll be on the reel to the game. For the end of the year. <laughs> uh, so what do you think? I mean, good good boundary drawing question. Maybe not for this guy, but in general, it works. You don't you don't want to be friends with someone. What do you do? Well, I th- is, what's the worst thing? You, I mean, you know, there is gaydar. So if they, if if one of them is gaydar has gaydar, you know what that is. Right? You can tell <laughs> gay radar. It's, it was before grinder. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that you might be able to tell, you know, who plays in the American League, who plays in the National League. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever, you know, so simply. <laughs> who's a, who's simply a pitcher and a catcher? Yeah, I was going to say, I've heard of pitchers and catchers before. Uh, who, <laughs> that's the American League. Well, huh? um, I don't know, man. I, I think, you know, it's vague at, at best. I think I, you, I think you have the right to friend anybody you want to whether he's you gay or not gay you know i don't care who it is it doesn't sound like it's decision. romantic yeah it, it, it's but, up to you but with the way that people feel about just everybody being different you know it's fucking dangerous for anybody man to that's probably why it, it's a friend they're probably like hey will you be my friend at least you're like oh okay you i'll be your friend yeah, have a beer if they work together whatever but you know it's it's awful right now i think just it, it's a, whole, it's a tough it's a tough world it's a tough time man and it, and the, all of this stuff in the last fourteen months and the, you know not just seeing all the businesses that aren't around anymore it's horrible and you look at business and my my daughter who's an executive assistant uh, she was just telling me a little while ago before I left she's trying to get reservations someplace in Pasadena for lunch for the executives from uh, the Disney Corporation mm-hmm. and. She says, Dad, every one of them I've called don't open for lunch anymore. They won't open till 4 o'clock. There are not many places opening up, nice places, yeah, that are opening up because before of 4 o'clock because th- of COVID. When, because everything hit, they're not getting employees back. Yeah. They don't have the staffing. That's a big deal. How, how much do you think of that is, is, uh, is real? I could see, you can really see it by, you know, like you watch the news and you go, they're going to cancel, you know, thousands of flights. Uh, in the summer, and then you think, okay, because a, a lot of people didn't come, didn't come back. Do you think that's that? You think that's true? Like a lot of people wouldn't. I've got to believe it is. You know, a very dear friend of mine, who's the owner of Stephen Steakhouse right there in, yep. his, in the city of Commerce, Jim uh, Jimmy Philippan. I was with him last night, and he's one of the guys that had to close. He was open seven days a week, eleven o'clock through oh, two in the morning. Uh, yeah. One of the biggest salsa places on the weekends in the county. He's now open Wednesday through Sunday, wow. four o'clock till uh, two. And during the week, I, I think he closes at midnight. 
but he can't afford to open because he Man. can't get his employees back. Wow. They're saying, hey, we're making more money being unemployed oh, than we that, are working. Yeah. That's the reason why. Not because they found better sure. gigs, but fuck, they're on yeah. unemployment. No, yeah, no, they found it, the best gig not working. <laughs> I got and, off the freeway right here in, in Burbank by the studios, and the restaurant's right there. Big signs. Everybody's asking for help, and they're not open. You know, they're closed during the day, but they're asking for help. They need people. They need you staff. Know, man, I never thought of like I thought people were trying to look for jobs. I never thought of no. it was just trying to fucking live No, all you can get any kind of job you wow. want right now. People are just, hey, that, why do I go to work for $20 an hour when I can get, with minimal out, I can get more money staying at home doing nothing? And even if you have kids or somebody's watching your kid, that you don't have to pay for that. Is that yeah. dog eating the, the fucking wires over there? Just, uh, his little tape. We're hey. fine. Little tape situation. It's okay. We we have George's Stitch. adorable dog Stitch in the in the audience today. Stitch looking a little hungry, going for some tape. Oh, there's some food on. Uh, Stitch, hang on for another two hours. Yeah, we're time. almost there, buddy. We're almost there. Oh. Yeah. No, okay. Oh, he wants that. All right. Yeah, but you are, are you a dog lover, Gil? Yeah, you know I I've always liked dogs. <laughs> okay. My wife I'll never has. Uh, oh. Yeah, you know she she's not been a dog lover, but. About three months ago now. What do you mean? Why? She's married to one. She don't she's even married to a perro. <laughs> she, uh, she, uh, oh, we had a stray, you know, just yeah. running the streets, came up and kind of befriended uh, my house, the family. And the guy looked, the dog looked sick, <laughs> wild, skinny, dirty. And my neighbor and myself both called animal control and said, hey, we don't know what this dog has. You know, maybe you can come and get it. So they came by. And you could tell that the, the dog had been mistreated. You couldn't get close <laughs> to it. It boggled and it yeah. run away. So the dog pound finally said, hey, here's a leash. If you can get the leash on him, we'll come back and pick him up. And I said, all right. <laughs> they left you the leash. Yeah, they left the leash here. Do it so, yourself, animal half control. <laughs> so we, I told the wife, I said, well, I can't leave this dog out here like this. Got to feed him. Put some food. Let's get some food and like, water. Like, like little Breadcrumbs like your Hansel yeah. and Gretel. So we put paper bowls out there. He walks back into the house. And he'd go every night, and he was sleeping on my patio every night. He'd go out during the day, go take a shit somewhere else, but he wasn't yeah. my dog, so I didn't care. Yeah, that's good. He kept coming back, and I got him to the point where I got him finally coming up close to me, eating out of my hand. Wow. So. That's pretty good. That You know, that's the whole thing, man, right? I got him eating out of my hand, and when he eat out of my hand, he rolled over, and he wanted me to rub his belly. Wow. Crazy. So, so I told the lady, I'll, I'll be back. I got to go to the, take my car for servicing. When I come back, don't worry, I'll call the desk squad. And she says, what do you mean the desk squad? I said, well, animal control. You don't want the dog. They're going to pick him up. They're just going to go kill him. And when I came back from service, she had a stainless steel water bowl, a stainless steel food bowl, <laughs> and a bed for the dog to sleep in. And I said, I guess we get to keep the dog. Oh, wow. So we kept the dog, got him vaccinated, got him this, got him that, had operations done on the dog. <laughs> Fuck it. And now the dog, I don't know who made out better, the dog with us or us with the dog. Wow. Um, That's beautiful. His name is Milo. And Milo comes, he, you know, my wife gets pissed off because <laughs> she, she cooks chicken for him. <laughs> you know, when we had to give him medication, I said, how are we going to hear that? He doesn't like the dog food we're giving him. Shit. And the doc said, hey, boil some chicken. Make some rice, no seasoning, cut it up, give it to her, and he eats it up. So she does that every day. She takes him out, he goes and walks and takes care of business. But yet, all I got to do is say, hey, Milo, Doc comes up. Man. Yeah. He's all How mine. old is he? How old is he? They say he's five years old. Oh, he's still A little young. mixed terrier, white, lovable. My wife loves him. He's a lap dog. He comes over here. Yeah. Right there with her. She loves him. Best. And the whole family loves him. So I, I don't know who's better, and we love the dog. No, I think that I think that that's true. You know, I think that you know dogs with people. You know, especially you know they use them now, and you know I always use them in hospitals and stuff, and, and with inmates. But if you're alone, you know, like I'm, I'm alone in the house with with the dogs. I've rescued probably twenty five, maybe. Yeah. And the reason that I did was because of what you were talking about. Is that when Lisa was in here from Big Love, the rescue? Yep. That. Sometimes they leave him at the house, then people move away, and the fucking dog won't go anywhere because he's like, they're coming back, mm -hmm. and then they get him, and like that, you can't go near him, he'll bite you, he'll show his teeth, and then they show him some kindness and love, and the dog comes to you every time. Yeah, he, he's you know? just... Uh, he's a great dog. We love that's him. The, he's like, hey, hey, Stitch is going crazy. Maybe that's our cue to wrap this one up. 
got some sort of Velcro situation. Oh, yeah. Know. All right. But uh, Stitch. Okay. hit the people with the number. Tell them. Uh, what is it, Gil? <laughs> the number is... Uh, Shit, I don't know. It's upside down. <laughs> there it is. 818 533 1843. Call one. Call. There you go. Will Gill get the signed Clayton Kershaw shoes in the next episode? Only the heaven knows. Find out next time. <laughs> awesome. I'm looking to heaven. <laughs>